All right, we're tracking some flurries out there with some clouds around. Eventually, some snow showers, but that's not the big story. The big story is the cold and the wind. Dangerous wind chills tonight. We'll tell you what you need to know next. And I know it's common sense, but you have to let your pets inside when it gets this cold outside. I'll tell you the ordinances in Lafayette and what Almost Home Humane Society is doing about all these pets that are left out in the cold. That's coming up. Daddy Daniels, please cancel class. My man Mitch, you gotta cancel it, man. Yeah, I, I'm begging you, please cancel. Ask and you shall receive. Purdue announced classes are officially canceled tomorrow. Why the decision may come as a shock. News 18 at 5 starts now. WLFI Lafayette. News from where you live. Good afternoon, I'm Jeff Smith. And I'm Kayla Sullivan. Thanks for joining us. Uh, we'll have more on Purdue's decision to cancel classes in just a moment. But first, these brutally cold conditions. It's about to get worse. Chief Meteorologist Chad Evans has been watching it all week. Chad? Yeah, you know, wind gusts out there still running as high as around 40 miles an hour. Recent gusts to 39 at the Purdue Airport, still gusting more than 30 at Rensselaer, Logansport, and Kokomo. So you take into account those winds and current temperatures that are dropping into the single digits, and that means wind chills dropping well below zero. In some places now, the wind chills as low as 20 below zero in our northwest counties, and the rest of the viewing area, it's running around 10 below zero. And a few flurries and light snow showers around, too. A few in the north, a few more as you go southward as well, and I think we'll see a scattering of snow showers come in overnight that may put down a dusting here in places. But it's not just the cold and the wind uh, that's causing interesting phenomenon uh, with our weather. This cold can affect what's happening in the ground, something called frost quakes. And meteorologist Balance Salvari has the latest on what causes these frost quakes and when we could see some in this forecast, Ballot. Yeah, hi, Chad. Those frost quakes occur during periods of rapidly decreasing temperatures after the ground has been saturated. So let's go ahead and bring this house on into reality here, and we'll break this down. This week is a great setup to explain how frost quakes occur. So for Monday, again, we saw the snow and the rain return, and this allowed for that one of two ingredients needed that moisture to come into play and all that rain and snow that helped soak the ground and then that started to go down on into the surface so all that moisture was started to get absorbed over the past several days and then with those cooler temperatures working their way on in that all started to freeze now it's important to remember that as water starts to freeze it does expand and that's going to create more and more stress over a long period of time so as that water continues to freeze and expand it's going to create stress and after a certain point it's going to go ahead and break or crack. Now that's going to release some pressure and that's going to create a boom or a popping sound and that's where that frost quake comes into play as that continues to expand. So the more water is frozen and the larger that break the louder that sound is going to be. But this could also occur in areas such as attics and up in roofs with those different temperatures between the inside and outside. Some lesser popped but again this is just a phenomenon that can occur with these cooling temperatures. So if you do happen to hear a loud boom or some popping sounds over the next several days you might as well have heard a frost quake. All right, Ballant, that's really fascinating. Thanks for that. Well, temperatures have already started to drop, as the gentleman just explained to us, and that's not going to stop anytime soon. And it means many businesses and schools will have to prepare for tomorrow. We have live team coverage tonight as these harsh winter conditions roll in. First, we'll go on over to News 18's Marvin Bills. The wind chill factor will not only force the area to use caution, it will also affect how emergency personnel operates. Marvin, how's the fire department bracing for these frigid temperatures? Kayla, I am standing inside of Fire Station 1 here in West Lafayette where I spoke with Deputy Chief Jeff Need and he told me that when brutal weather, brutal weather like this hits, it's definitely, they need to be prepared so that they can do their job accordingly and appropriately. Now, these vehicles still need to be prepared for temperatures like tomorrow. Water is one of the biggest concerns and due to the wind chill, water pumps could freeze. The icy roads outside make it harder for trucks because of the weight. Now, these trucks weigh 40,000 pounds plus, which means in icier conditions, stopping is harder. The factors that play into a fire station's preparations it involves more than just filling up the water tanks. Once you've been there 
20 minutes, 30 minutes. Now uh, people are getting wet, and once we start shutting things down, that's when um, fire hose can literally turn into a, a, like a lead pipe that it, it's literally frozen to the ground. Uh, you're, it's being left there. Now, Chief Nee told me that the first 10 to 15 minutes on the scene aren't bad, although tomorrow's condition will for sure raise concerns. Coming up on News 18 at 6, we'll tell you just how local emergency crews are preparing for the frigid temperatures that we're going to see later this evening going into tomorrow. But first, Jor News 18's Jordan Burroughs is live outside of Almost Home Humane Society. He has just what you need to know about how the cold weather will impact your pets. Jordan? I can't stress this enough. With it being so cold outside, please take your pets inside. The Almost Home Humane Society, their job is to make the public better pet owners if they do have pets. And there's an ordinance within the city of Lafayette that says if it's below 20 degrees, you need to take those pets inside or you may be. Now, you've heard from Chad, Ballant, even Annie this morning. The temperatures have been below 20 all day, and it's going to stay the same for at least the next 24 hours. So I'm urging you to please just let those pets outside just to use the bathroom and then let them inside because these temperatures are staying cold all day. The Almost Home Humane Society right now does provide emergency boarding, but that's just for five days. They also provide gates for feral cats, and the Almost Home Humane Society is open noon to 6, but tomorrow they will be closed but employees will be taking care of the animals inside the Almost Home Humane Society here. Coming up at News 18, I'll tell you more about that ordinance and more about how, what you can do to protect your animals outside if they must be in the cold. Reporting live at Almost Home Humane Society, Jordan Burroughs, News 18. Well, thank you, Jordan. A homeless outreach team is working to get people off the streets before we reach deadly temperatures. News 18's Micah Upshaw spoke with an outreach worker today who says temperatures this cold make that job even more critical. Micah, what does all this mean? Jeff and Kayla, temperatures are dropping as we speak. For the Path Street Homeless Outreach Team, this means getting people shelter as soon as possible. Path stands for People Assisting the Homeless. And that's exactly what the organization does. PATH outreach case managers go to popular places where homeless people gather. They make sure people stuck outside are supplied with food and other basic needs. Then work at finding them housing. Lafayette Transitional Housing and Lafayette Urban Ministry are main resources for the homeless. But according to Kurt Harker, for some that's not even an option. There are other people who have been banned from those places. And it's usually because of some behavioral issue that, that, that they just weren't allowed to stay there anymore. And so those are the people who are in the most need right now. Harker says he's currently working with 15 homeless individuals. Each have been placed somewhere during the extreme cold temperatures. Coming up on News 18 at 6, we take a walkthrough with Harker to see what a typically, typical scouting day looks like. Micah Upshaw, News 18. Well, thank you, Micah. Purdue is canceling classes Wednesday due to extreme wind chill predictions. This decision comes after more than 10,000 students signed a petition online. One of the students commented, tuition is frozen, but I don't want to be. Needless to say, students are happy with Purdue's choice to close for the day. Wind chills are expected between negative 50 and negative 35 tomorrow. I know a lot of the times students don't speak up, and when they actually do speak up, like people do listen. It's a rare decision for the university. Since 1977, Purdue has only canceled classes 11 times due to snow or wind chill. Ball State, Notre Dame, IUPUI, UND, ISU, and Ivy Tech are also canceling classes Wednesday. We will continue to monitor conditions as the dangerously cold temperatures move into the area. Our weather team is keeping their eyes on the latest models. You can stay up to date by downloading our app. We also have the most current information on the homepage of our website, WLFI.com, and on Chad's blog. And of course, we will continue to cover this winter weather throughout the week here on News 18. And we're not done talking about the weather just yet. Chief Meteorologist Chad Evans has everything you need to know about the dangerously cold conditions ahead and what you need to know to stay safe. But first, a very local, familiar name is being honored for giving back to the Greater Lafayette community who took home the Sagamore of the Wabash Award next. 